Welcome to CATS Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 10.2. So I already have it written out and I'll just explain how to go about it. So the first thing which you notice is that in this circuit, so first of all we are asked to find V1 and V2. So the first thing you notice is that we have a super node over here. So we have this voltage source which is in between two nodes and there is nothing connected to the voltage source or between the two nodes other than just this voltage source. So this qualifies as a super node. So now from the term super node, these two nodes actually become one node. And therefore we're gonna form one huge equation, which is gonna combine these two nodes or the equations of these two nodes. But first, we can have a formula which is associated with this voltage source. We start from the positive side of the voltage source going to the negative side. And this is the first formula which I have here, which says V1. So I start from the positive, subtract V2. It's equals to the value of the voltage source. So that is the first equation which you can find or which you can get from a super node. So you move from the positive and subtract the one which appears on the negative side and equate that to the value of the voltage source. So this is our first equation. We have two variables and therefore we need two equations to successfully solve this, right? So after that, I just manipulated this formula by taking this to the other side of the equal sign. And that is where you will have your value for the voltage source added to this because when it comes to this side, it has a positive sign, right? So now we move on to the second equation, which is going to help us. And that second equation is the equation of the super node. So the equation of the super node, we form by, we form that by just adding the equations on this side with the equations on this side. So doing that using, using nodal analysis, we have a V subtract 75 divided by four. Then we have V1 divided by J4 which is what we have here, v, V1 subtract 75 divided by 4. Then we have plus V1 divided by J4. And on this side, we have V2 divided by J1 plus V2 divided by 2. This is 2 over here. All right. So that is what we have here, V2 divided by negative J1 plus V2 divided by 2. So now we're going to multiply everything by... A value which is in a way going to be common among all of them. So the value which I used is J4. So multiplying everything by J4, we're going to have J4 divided by 4. So the J4 is going to be here. J4 divided by 4 is just J. And J4 divided by J4 is 1. And that is why we have this only. And J4 divided by negative J1 is negative 4. And that is why we have this in our equation. And J4 divided by 2 is J2. So this is our equation after multiplying through by J4, right? After finding that equation, all you have to do, or something which you can do quickly, is to just group the variables according to... So group the terms which have the variable which you're actually interested in, right? So if you look here, we have j v1 which is that over there which is that over there j v1 and we also have 1 v1 which is what we have here so 1 plus j v1 that is what we have from this and that and this is a constant which is negative j multiplied by 75 taking that to the other side of the equal sign is going to give you positive j multiplied by 75 and here, associated with V2, we have negative 4 and we have J2. So these are the things which you have currently, right, over there. So now that we have all of that, here's something which we're going to do. We're going to take this equation over here, which says V1 is equal to the value of the voltage source plus V2 and substitute it where we see V1. And that is what I did here. This is 100. The value of the voltage source plus V2, which is this equation which I took up here. Multiplying these two brackets, we have the same thing which you have in the bracket after multiplying by 1. And by, after multiplying by j, we have j multiplied by that and j multiplied by that, which is what we have over here. Then we have the rest of the equation, which is just taking this over there and just taking this over there. Right? So now that we have that, 
we can just simply again group the like terms and the only variable now inside is v2 after substituting this equation up here so now that we only have v2 we can therefore group everything and solve for v2 so grouping everything we're going to have one from here we're going to have negative four plus j2 from here so negative four plus j2 and we're going to have j from here so that is what we have we can add this up this is going to be negative 3 plus 3j so therefore v2 is equal to all of this on the other side of the equal sign which is j75 so taking this constant and this constant to the other side of the equal sign we're going to have 75 j75 subtract this and subtract that on the other side of the equal sign. Now finding V2, we're just gonna divide the constants on the right side of the equal sign by whatever value which was multiplied by V2. So doing that, we're gonna have, so this value is negative three plus J3, which is what we have at the bottom. So we divide by that. And at the top, we have J75 subtract the value of the resistive value, subtract J multiplied by the value of the voltage source which is what we have in the previous equation just take this to the other side of the equal sign and this is what so this is what we have and your v2 should therefore be 16.8895 with an angle of 165.72 degrees and don't forget your units this is volts we are finding the load voltage v2 now taking this answer or taking this value we can come back up so this equation, which says 100 with an angle of 60 degrees plus V2 is equal to V1. So to find the value of V1, we're just going to substitute our V2, which we found down here. Substituting that in there, we're going to have a V1 of 96.8 with an angle of 69.669 degrees volts, right? So those are your two values of V1 and V2.